Hello and welcome to the Car Canada channel. Welcome to another video in my series about how Toyota Safety Sense works. In today's video, we're going to be talking about pre-collision system, which is a very big deal and which is a system you really need to know how it works and how it doesn't work. That's very important. More on that in a bit. Today, we're going to talk about uh, the radar sensor's best buddy. And if you you're just tuning in, I encourage you to watch part one and continue on the series so everything would make sense. If this is your first time watching this video, consider subscribing to the channel, consider checking out some of my other videos. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos and let's not keep you waiting, let's dig right into it. So, pre-collision. Before we get into the system, you guys have waited long enough, let's meet the radar sensor's best friend. The front recognition camera, located right there on the windshield, the center of the windshield. So, initially you would think, okay, so it's just a camera. What's so special about it? Well, actually, that camera does so much you would not believe it even does 10 times more than this guy does. And this was the innovative part. This is when all of a sudden, this sensor went from feeling things to actually seeing them live, in picture, in color. Now it can see and feel. And that makes a huge difference. Let's talk about how this, these two best friends work together. So. This guy is going to pick up, like we talked about in the previous episode, this guy is going to pick up distance and speed. The camera can see shape, what kind of object is it, how far it is even more accurately because now it can see it. And the most important thing is what is the object? Is it a flying paper? Is it a hubcap from 55 Chevy? Or is it a person? Is it a car? Is it a tree? Is it infinite amount of data that it can collect? And it's always watching. It's always looking. It's always scanning alongside this guy. Even when you don't have the... Now we're no longer talking about cruise control. This happens even when you're driving. It's always scanning this radar sensor. Even when you don't have the cruise control engaged, it is always looking and watching and scanning and getting, it's always ready. Let me explain it to you this way, how these two work together. There is a, a war room, if you would. Everybody's assembled. They're all ready to go at a moment's notice. They're all, have all their battle plans ready. They're just right there waiting for action. But if you're a good driver and you're always paying attention, they don't go further than that because they're always scanning. They're looking at the car in front of you. How far is it? How far are we approaching? Is that car stopping? Is that car stopping? How far is it? It's always doing this all over the place. Now people will think, wait, is that going to wear anything? It's all software. It's only looking at this data and analyzing, analyzing all the time. It's all software. There's no moving parts here. It's just looking and uh, scanning. It's not doing anything else. So nothing is going to wear from this. I don't want you to take the wrong impression of my explanation. But here is how it actually detects things. You're driving and the computer knows the car. It knows how far it's going to take this car to stop from any given speed. It has all this mapped out. So it's going to look at the object in front of you. Okay, we're following a car. Life's good. All of a sudden that car slams on their brake on an emergency and uh, you're slightly texting on your phone. Let's take that example. Never do that, by the way. You're texting on your phone. You don't even know that the, that the person in front of you just slammed on their brakes because there is a child getting their football from the street. It happens all the time, around, especially around suburban America. Well, this system, remember, it's always watching, watching, watching. What's, what's happening? What's going on? How far is that car? It's gonna start from, it's gonna go from watching the situation to watching you. Because now it knows disaster is coming. 
is gonna start watching you. Are you gonna react? First, it's gonna give you a gentle nudge, just a small slap. It's gonna start peeping at you. It says break, giant break. Sign is gonna appear on the dash because now it knows, okay, we're coming a little too close here and I don't like what you're doing. She's watching you now. Now the car is watching you. Are you gonna react? If you get even closer and she really doesn't like what's going on here, it's gonna full force the brake because now there is no other chance here. You're not doing anything. I really don't like what I'm seeing here. So I'm gonna slam on the brakes. And the idea of that, and this is one of the biggest misconceptions about this system. This system does not stop the car. The idea here is not to stop the car and avoid the accident and your insurance doesn't go up. The car doesn't know that. The car doesn't care about that, if you would. I'm sorry to say it, it's the truth. The car cares about one thing. Are you gonna get hurt in this accident or not? That's all it cares about. So it's gonna slam the brakes as hard. You cannot possibly push the brakes as hard as the car will because it knows what's maximum. Your maximum of the brakes is how strong your foot is. The car's maximum is the actual maximum braking. So it's gonna slam the brakes. The idea is it's gonna prevent a major accident from happening. Because if you're flying down the street at 40, 50 miles an hour and you hit a car that's at five miles an hour, that's a big accident. But if you hit that car in front of you at say 10 or 15 miles an hour and the car is doing five, that's a less major accident. So that's the idea of pre-collision. People don't assume pre-collision is just gonna break bring the car to its to a screeching halt like all the commercials show i understand the commercial it can do that but push it too far and it's not going to be able to do that because that is not the intent the intent is to reduce the severity of the accident not to avoid it at all it's going to try to avoid it of course but there's a lot of chances it won't it's just going to make it less severe and when the car knows we're going into disaster, it's gonna prepare a lot more things. It's gonna pull the seat belts. It's gonna, it knows I don't have enough space to stop the car. It's gonna know that and it's gonna prepare you for impact if you would. It's gonna pull the seat belt tensioner. It's gonna get you ready for accident. If you, there, there's no, a lack of a better word, that's how it, what it's gonna do. But if it knows it's gonna stop, it's gonna stop. This, the following information is very important that you understand and know because this is how disaster happens. Number one, let's say the car did stop you in time, okay? You know, you threw your phone that you were texting with, you're not supposed to do, and you freaked out, hold the steering wheel, the car slammed on the brakes and we stopped. It's only going to hold the brakes for two seconds because at that point the car assumes if this didn't wake you up and scare you, I don't know what will. Unless you're flat asleep and there, or there is a complete emergency like a heart attack, like a stroke. It assumes that this has woken you up and now your foot is firm on the brake because it's only going to hold it for two seconds. Guess what's going to happen after that? It's gonna roll, that's it, there's no brake, you're still in drive, it's gonna roll, because it can't hold the brakes more than two seconds. That's how the system is designed. So it's very important that when it, there is an event, and that's the name of, the official name of it, when there is an event of pre-collision brake, you need to put your foot on the brake. That's the most important thing. The second most important thing, and this is, Folks, I cannot emphasize also how important this is. Do not test the system. I have said this once in a, in a Facebook group and people were all over the place. They were telling me, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't. Folks, this system is extremely smart. It knows when you're uh, trying to make an accident. It also knows the most important thing. It will not take over your control. If it sees that you are braking hard, if you are trying to turn the wheel to avoid the accident, it's gonna let you. It, can, it will not take control from you. 
So when you're in that situation and you slammed on your brakes, it will not override you. That's it. It's gonna, okay, you're uh, doing what you need to do. I'm just gonna cringe, if you would. It's not going to take over. So this is very important that you know this because when you're trying to simulate an accident, it's not gonna work that way because it's gonna know because your evasive action, you cannot just come with, just cold blooded and just slam into a wall. Unless you're trying to do that, you're not gonna be able to activate the system. Folks, do not test the system. This is very important that you do not test it. You know, it's like, let me give you an example to, to really, for this to stick and you'll never forget it. The best example. Do you think you will be hurt if you jump off a cliff? I think you will. Well, why don't we try it? I don't wanna try it. I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna try that. That's a, uh, hey, you're gonna jump off the cliff, you'll fall in the water, nothing will happen. Well, why don't you go try that and see how that goes? I'm not gonna, I'll pass. That's up to you. People, don't test the system. It's designed to work and it works great. There's no reason to test it. The system does so much. The, the most minimum issue is gonna pick it up and it's gonna shut down everything and you'll get a Christmas tree on the desk. It's as simple as that. Do not test the system ever, please. So problems with this system or with the uh, radar sensor's best buddy. We already talked about the radar sensor in the previous video. All the same things apply to this. However, let's talk about the camera now that we introduce you guys to the front recognition camera. It's, it's a camera. It's mounted to the front windshield on the inside. It's really problem free. It has two components that you need to be aware of. It has the camera itself. Obviously it needs to be clean and people ask, wait a minute, what about when it rains? What about when it snows? Well, the camera is placed in a position that is in the field of the wiper. So when you use your wipers, it's going to actually wipe in front of it. So a good habit with cars that have this is that Make sure you always have good wipers. Don't let your wipers go until they're screeching all over the place and smearing everything until you replace them. That is good practice. And this system will also pick it up when it doesn't like what's happening. It's gonna sh disable everything and tell you, hey, I don't like what I'm seeing. Another thing about these cameras, which is very important that you know about, they also have a calibration because this camera, yes, it can see, but remember, it's not a human's eye doesn't have the, the brain capacity of the human being. It needs to know how far is, is far and how left and right far are things. So in the calibration process of this camera, again, we need to tell the computer of the camera, hey man, this is the car. We have to introduce it to the car. Here are the dimensions of the car. Here is how high you are. Because, for example, in this Camry, the camera sits this high, but in a Highlander, it sits even higher. So it needs to know that because most of these cameras are similar between the models. So you need, in the calibration process, we introduce the camera to the car. Hey man, here's the car size, here's your height, here's everything. And then we set up three targets and tell at a specific distance, again, it has to be very accurate and, and very to the millimeter. And then, so we set three targets, we tell the camera, we introduce the camera to the targets, here's the middle target, here's the left, and here's the right. And this calibration process needs to happen every time the camera is physically moved. Now, there's a lot of misconceptions about this, and. This partly goes on Toyota because their language is a little different about this. Some of the text says every time the camera is removed from the windshield, it needs to be recalibrated. Some of the text says if the windshield has been removed, the camera has to be calibrated. I'd rather be safe and sorry 
So I'm going to say every time there's any work on the camera, it needs to be calibrated. It's not a, not a crazy process. Any dealership can do it. Actually, some aftermarket outfitters are also doing it. But when you absolutely have to calibrate and when you remove the windshield or for replacement, if you get a rock chip, that camera needs to be calibrated because the windshield have a little bit of room for error when you install it. It's not a perfect, it fits like a glove. No, there's a little bit of movement. And then the other thing is, it must be an original windshield. Now, I'm pr someone is probably jumping to the comments right now. No, I had an aftermarket windshield and it works great. Perhaps. But if you're going to go aftermarket windshield with these cameras, it's got to be a good brand. It's got to be a good quality glass. The clarity of the glass must be good. And then remember, the bracket that the camera sits on comes pre-glued to the glass. So that placement of that bracket needs to be perfect and precise because what's the point of me introducing the camera to the car and telling the camera hey here they got all the dimensions and the bracket is wrong so now all my dimensions are wrong and these are preset dimensions it's not like I'm going to keep start measuring everything no they're preset I just enter them for the specific model so this is very important folks you need to know that every time the windshield is replaced this has to be calibrated most these windshields can get a little expensive. Most folks are doing it under insurance. So have your insurance pay for the calibration. Take it to a dealership. Have them done perfectly and not say, ah, you don't need it. Yes, you do need it. It's very important because this camera can work if you replace the windshield, but is it working right? And remember, this camera does so much that it's very important that you're absolutely sure that it's calibrated perfectly and working properly. And another thing that I want you to not do is don't trust it blindly. Don't say, well, I have this system. I'm not going to pay so much attention because, you know, I got to text this guy and I'm going to call. I got to read the newspaper or do whatever that is completely distracting me from the road because I got the system. It'll take care of me. Do not do that, people. This system is designed for true emergencies where you're driving, you're driving perhaps a little too close to the person in front of you, and that person all of a sudden had, had an emergency, had to really stop, and you just did not have enough time to react, then it's gonna help you. Otherwise, it does not work the way most people think it does. Folks, this is very important that you do not completely rely on this system. This system is beautiful, it works great when it's needed, but the best way to use this system is to actually never use it. Drive safe, pay attention. That's the best way to really utilize the system. The system saves lives. It, it does wonders, but it's not an excuse for, you know. An example of this system not actually working. Well, if it's dark at night, completely pitch dark, the camera can't see very well. If someone jumps in front of you outside the, the beam pattern of the headlights, it's not going to see it. And if you're not paying attention because you're counting on it, it's not going to see it. It's not going to, to determine there's a pedestrian or there's a car or it's going to, it just doesn't have enough data and it's not going to do anything. If it, it's not going to act on incomplete data. It's a computer. Remember, it doesn't think Computers never have the capacity that a human brain does. So it cannot act in this fashion if it doesn't have the information. It's just programmed to do one or zero, and, and that's how it works. I hope this video was helpful. I hope we learned something new. We met uh, the radar sensor's best friend, the frank recognition camera. In the next episode of this series, we're going to be, we're gonna be uh, saying goodbye to our radar sensor for a bit. We're going to focus mainly on the front recognition camera and how a lot more things that it does, like lane keep assist, like automatic high beams, and more. I hope you liked this video. I hope you learned something new. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and you have a wonderful day.